Mario Kart is all about going fast, drifting all over the place, and ending friendships with a single blue shell. That's all fun, but it can be nice to take things slow, or not at all. Thus, here's a stupid challenge video where we'll be seeing how difficult it is to beat Mario Kart DS without the gas pedal. Just be warned, I'm using the term beat very, very loosely. This is less of a is it possible and more of a how painful is it kind of challenge. So we simply need to cross the finish line of each track in all 8 cups. Now, before we can even look at the various tracks, let's talk tech. So, in this game, the gas pedal is activated with the A button, so I've simply unbound it for my controller. Thankfully, since this is a DS game, we can use touch controls to interact with menu options. Without the gas pedal, our only movement options are to reverse, utilize boost panels and other track features, and abuse items as much as we possibly can. Unfortunately, even while under the effects of a boost of any kind, you can't actually drift, so hopping is used almost everywhere. As for the speed, 50cc is better for potentially passing other racers, though 150cc usually makes for a much smoother time as each item takes you that much farther due to the higher speed cap. Now, I should mention, there is a great write-up on this game's various stats for characters, carts, and whatnot, made by jdaster64, which I've linked in the description. I use this to help understand our various options for carts and characters. Now, for a rough overview of the stats, speed determines how fast you go when not driving over rough terrain, acceleration controls how fast you both accelerate from a stop, and decelerate after a boost. Handling simply changes how quickly a cart turns while holding left or right, drift is really pointless for this challenge, as is Mini Turbo. Weight is the total of both your cart and character's weight, which changes how much you or your opponent gets knocked away during collision. And lastly, Mario Kart DS is special and that actually has an item stat, which adjusts your chances of getting a good item in any given position. That said, it's important to know that every cart reverses at the same speed of 24 miles per hour, so no matter if you're using the Hurricane, the fastest cart with a light or heavy character, or a high acceleration cart like the Dry Bomber, which has a graphical glitch, sorry, reversing is always the same. Boosts like mushrooms, mini turbos, dash panels, and so on, increases your top speed by 30%. That said, you'd think that this means a high speed cart would go faster on a single boost, but as you can see in this comparison clip, it's actually the Dry Bomber. These boosts can be extended in almost every case with hops. As you can see in this clip, using a single mushroom and spamming the R button in 150cc lets you get almost a whole lap around the track, while no hops gets you about half that distance. So in general, if we want to do well, we must use a high acceleration cart with a lot of hopping, but then there's the item stat. So, for the most part, we're almost always in 8th place when opening item boxes, from which we can get an order from most to least likely, uh, a star, triple mushroom, lightning or bullet bill, and a golden mushroom. A star is pointless, and lightning bolt is only good for taking out some anger against CPUs, so depending on the track, you might benefit from a higher item stat to ensure more bullet bill spamming, or a lower stat for more consistent triple mushrooms. All that said, What's it like actually racing through the various tracks? We're going to start with Shell Cup, because uh, Dry Bones has a shell, and I like Dry Bones. Here we go. So, its first track is Mario Circuit 1, which happens to be the first ever track in the Mario Kart series. This track is completely flat, no big jumps, and it has a very straightforward shape, so it's not that bad. Unfortunately, it only has one set of item boxes which are located on the other side of the track from the starting line, so no matter what item you get, you'll always be reversing for about half the time. This is a bit painful, so I would give it 3 brake pedals out of 5 on the fun scale. It's not exactly paradise, but it's not that rough either. Next up is Moo Moo Farm, which has an even simpler shape and 4 sets of item boxes spread pretty evenly across the map. While using the Dry Bomber, I was able to get triple mushrooms from almost every single box, which makes this track get a perfect 5 out of 5 because it's actually fun? It's weird, I know. Peach Circuit is similar to Mario Circuit, though this one has two sets of item boxes, so it's definitely an improvement, but could be better. 4 to 5. Now, Luigi Circuit is a bit unique in that it's a very tight figure 8, and it's the first so far that has a boost panel before any item boxes. Here we are lucky that we can actually choose to reverse off to the side, past the panel, but we can do a sort of reverse handbrake turn, but using hops, so I'll just call that a reverse hop turn. As long as we're facing mostly forward when we hit the boost panel, we can get past it just fine. After that, the rest of the track has a good amount of boosts and item boxes spread throughout. In 50cc, this is really rough because you can never actually get that far in the uh, center section, but 150, it's not that bad at all. 5 out of 5. Mushroom? Is that you? Now, next up is Mushroom Cup. 
So we have another figure eight uh, circuit, but this one is way less fun. Sure, there are no big obstacles or complicated terrain, but it's pretty bland, not enough seasoning, three out of five. You should know that with this challenge, when you're not using the gas pedal and you don't want to reverse for all three laps, you want to try to get each item box before your previous boost runs out. That is still very much true here, but the inner slope track and risky item box water stream gives this one some real room for improvement. It's pretty neat. Five out of five. Now, Cheap Cheap Beach is uh, garbage, so this one has a boost panel before you get to the item boxes, but there is no way to avoid it. Also, the item boxes behind the goal are so far back that only a bold build can give you enough momentum to maybe reach it while moving forward. So you're forced to pull a reverse hop turn, which is only fun when it works the first try. From there, the rest of the track is pretty okay with some possibilities for cutting across the shallow water. Uh, but this is Mario Kart. The chances of somehow losing all momentum between the southern part of the track and the docks is quite likely, so it feels like more of a chore than anything kind of fun. One out of five. Don't recommend. The last track for this cup is Luigi's Mansion, and I'm gonna straight up give you the score because uh, I really like it. Five out of five. It's just so nice. And not just because this is where I realized that you can damage a CPU multiple times with a star by just sitting still. Now, I should mention that I've played through all of these cups without the gas pedal at least twice, but Mushroom Cup three times. On one of them, I was using the Cucumber, which has a decent balance of acceleration and item stats. This works really, really well with Luigi's Mansion and 150cc. After reversing to the first item boxes, a bullet bill gets you far enough to coast with decent speed to the next set, and even if you get a bad roll, your next item can get you all the way to the spinning boxes. Another bullet bill, and you're back to the starting line, ready for the next lap. It's actually a great track. It flows really well. Flipping back to retro tracks, there's Banana Cup. So Banana Cup's first track is Donut Plains 1, which doesn't look like a banana at all. Still, this track has a similar feel to Peach's Circuit from earlier. It has decent item placement, but it could be better. I should say that it has a few opportunities to cut corners, which is that much more helpful as you reverse on grass at the same speed as on the track. Though I will say that this track plays very, very differently in 50 and 150cc. In the former, you can easily pass multiple racers using a single item, but uh, you don't get far enough to access the next item box set. The latter gives you no hope of getting above 8th, but at least it feels way better to play. 4 to 5. Next, uh, f Frap uh, Snowland? <laughs> More like, more like crap Snowland. I don't like it. It's very boring, too big, two out of five. From cold to hot, Bowser Castle 2 had me very, very conflicted. So this one is absolutely a zero out of five with 50 CC, but more like a three out of five with 150. This track definitely has a learning curve as it has a number of opportunities to heat yourself into the lava on accident, which would ruin all your momentum and force you to perform reverse hops multiple times if you want to get past any of the boost ramps. That said, when you get to use some item drops and sort of keep up with the flow, despite being painful, it's a pretty fun track. Lastly for this cup is uh, Baby Park. You'd think that this one would be Child's Play with 50cc, but it's actually 150 where things are actually really interesting. Of course, you have to start with the usual turn and reverse to reach the item boxes, but for this track with this speed localized entirely in this uh, track, <laughs> a bullet bill gets you basically one whole lap around the track. While the chances of this happening first try is really low, I use save states before each item box to ensure bullet bills, and with optimal drops, I actually managed to get sixth place. That's incredible, at least for me. Five out of five. Pretty fun. Top 10 Deadliest Plants. Now we have Flower Cup, which has very few flowers in its tracks. So Desert Hills is somewhat fun with 150cc. From the first set of items, cutting across the dunes can let you reach the pokey area, and from there it's pretty easy to keep moving. Decent shape, pretty reasonable obstacles, 4 out of 5. Delfino is another 0 out of 5 with 50cc, because like, a single mushroom can barely even launch you across the dock shortcut, it's not fun. 150cc on the other hand, uh, you can get pretty far, but unfortunately it's hard to go from one lap to the next without running out of steam, which isn't that much fun. Mm, 3 out of 5. Now, Waluigi Pinball is special, and not because of Waluigi, I really don't care about him, but more importantly is that this track is actually the one that made me wonder how feasible a no gas pedal challenge would be. As such, I retried this one a number of times, and with a bit of strategy, it's actually really fun. Sure, you're required to do a reverse hop turn to get into the first launch pipe, but from there, hops and timely item usage can keep it going all the way throughout. The ramp following the green section of track initially seemed extremely daunting, however, 
I eventually realized that this game doesn't actually care about physics that much. Hopping up a ramp is just as effective as on a straightaway, so it's not that bad. I will say that the pinballs rolling across the track can be pretty disruptive, but as long as you're looking at the map and actually trying to avoid them, uh, it can be done. 4 out of 5. Shroom Ridge finishes off this cup and it's simultaneously really annoying and really fun. The cars can be a huge issue and there's only two sets of static item boxes. Also, something about this track just lends itself to frustration. On my first attempt, I got robbed of a golden mushroom by a boo, and at one point I was running out of juice and tried to get an item just for it to ignore me completely. Also, I got knocked off right after finishing. Regardless, the ever-moving item boxes gives this track a lot of opportunity for improvements, and the numerous turns makes me almost feel like I'm actually drifting. Four to five. Good job, Mr. Nintendo. Tanuki! Now, as for Leaf Cup, it's a real mixed bag. Koopa Beach 2 isn't bad, but it's also not that fun. Its box placement leads to inevitable slowdown somewhere around the starting line, which is just worse because it's uh, just a boring, like, aesthetic. 3 out of 5. Choco Mountain is painful. I don't like it. Layout sucks. Those rolling Choco Spheres are especially great at ruining your momentum, and I just dislike the aesthetic as a whole. 0 out of 5. No thanks. Luigi Circuit is, um, boring. It has too few item boxes for its size, it's not that fun. Uh, though, when you squint, the track looks like a headless guy breakdancing, and that is uh, somewhat redeeming. Uh, 2 out of 5. Lastly, Mushroom Bridge is a 3 out of 5 because it's just okay. That said, this is completely unrelated to the challenge, but look at how they massacred my boy! It was incredible in Double Dash, but this is how they treated it in DS? No alternate paths, no obstacles, no pointless green pipe teleports, and you can't even drive across the arch of the titular bridge? Zero out of five for the adaptation. How dare you? It's hard to find a mean for every transition. For real. Uh, our second to last standard race is Star Cup. Its first track, DK Pass, is so close to being great, but it just falls a bit short. Its first item boxes are a bit too far to reasonably keep up the momentum, which is unfortunate because the rest of the track is pretty well spaced out with some fun turns and scenery. 4 out of 5. TikTok Clock is actually really decent. The big stretch following the first item boxes has some handy boost panels which gets you quite nicely to the items before the lower area. A bullet bill takes you really well to the smaller clock face, though uh, mushrooms can be a bit less useful if you're not driving around the cog with its turn instead of against, so it's a bit challenging, but challenging is okay. It's like a 4 out of 5. Uh, the last two tracks, Mario Circuit and Airship Fortress, are pretty okay. If they were a bit shorter by like even 50 feet, they would be wonderful, but as it stands, they both get like a 3 out of 5. Lightning ball. Now it's uh, time for the last Retro Cup, aka a Lightning Cup. So Choco Island 2 definitely redeems the Choco lineage. Its first item boxes aren't too far, it has a pretty simple design with a number of ramps and item boxes, 5 out of 5. After that, Banshee Boardwalk is an okay level. Though I feel like it's an OSHA violation to not have guardrails all the way throughout, it'd be nice if it was a little shorter on the straightaways, but not bad, 4 out of 5. Now, Sky Garden is actually one where I'd say that bullet bills are the least optimal, because they have a tendency to blast you right past the item boxes. With Mushrooms, on the other hand, this track has a plenty of turns to play around with, and uh, also fun fact, you can actually get across the floating island shortcut while reversing, which is useless because you're missing out on item boxes, but it's still neat. 5 out of 5. And then there's the Dino Nugget shaped Yoshi Circuit. Solid island design, good item placement, not that many options for shortcuts, but still 5 out of 5. This is a special time. And uh, finally, uh, I've saved the worst for last because it's special cup time. So for Warrior Stadium, I will say that the first set of items is a bit far, but otherwise there's a pretty decent balance of turns, boosts, and item boxes, uh, four to five. Peach Gardens, however, has a pretty lackluster design. Its item placement leaves a bit to be desired. Um, chain chomps are cool, but still like three out of five. Bowser Castle has a lot of potential for fails. Especially because uh, the bullet bill loves tossing you into the lava. A lot of places where you can mess up, and not in a way that feels fun. 2 out of 5. Now we have uh, Rainbow Road, the final track of the game, and final one for this video. It's not fun. 
You're basically forced to reverse all the way to the item boxes just to get enough momentum to pass over the first boost panel as reverse hop turning doesn't work because there's no guardrail to go against. You're just going to eat yourself off into the ether. Uh, later, the spiral is uh, pretty rough to reverse across because you're always sliding to the side. And then if you uh, happen to lose momentum before the gap after the 45 degree turn, it can be hard, well still doable, to reverse hop across it. Overall, um, despite the aesthetic and uh, sort of lineage of this track, it's not fun. It's actually really painful and takes way too long. It's, uh, it's a negative one out of five because it made me sad. <laughs> now, uh, closing thoughts. So I initially thought this challenge would be a complete waste of time. Still, it's a surprisingly fun way to play the game, though uh, in very limited situations. Now, you should know that my ratings are 100% accurate and backed by extensive scientific testing, uh, so I've concluded that the Retro Lightning Cup is nearly perfect with an overall score of 19 out of 20, while Special Cup should be launched directly into the sun with a score of 8 out of 20. That's an F, and not in the respectful way. Oh, and I should also mention, uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, maybe subscribe. Also, also, uh, big thanks to Christy Countress, Pseudonymous, and Steven W for being super fans. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.